Sure thing. Um, so yeah, hi guys, I'm Jeff. I'm the head of BD at Room9. Uh, I've been in the crypto space for about eight years now. Obviously started off with Bitcoin, kind of expanded into lots of other areas and then inevitably, as I think many are these days, come, came back to Bitcoin. Um, room 9 as a project, we're, trying, we're building the home for all things Room on Bitcoin, um, focusing on we've got a decentralized indexer that we're building as the backbone of our infrastructure. On top of that, we're building portfolio trackers, analytics tools, all the things new people are going to need when they come to the Room space and to help the space grow. We're also building bridges um, and, yeah, basically focused on kind of building the fundamental tooling that's going to be required to allow this space to grow. Great, great, great summary. Yeah, that's exciting, Jeff. Uh, so, yeah, nice to have you here. Uh, hello, Wizard. How are you? Yo, very good, guys. Really happy to be here. It's my first space being with more Asian-focused community, which I'm really glad that I have this opportunity. So, quick summary. I'm Weasley. I'm a co-founder of Wizards. And we are an experimental collection on Bitcoin. We are actually the largest profile picture collection. We have over 62,000 minted. And we just closed our mint a few days ago, which lasted like two months, even a bit more. And we were kind of the most affordable pre-room project. We still have to review our art, but our main goal was just onboarding more new people to ordinals from other chains and we managed to do that by making our price like cheaper than a free mint basically like 20 bucks with all fees with transaction fees so yeah the main goal was just onboard new people provide uh, solutions to pay with ethereum and solana and usdt and all other altcoins for the people that are not really into bitcoin and i think we managed our goal pretty well so far yeah, the challenges surrounding fees are unique and onboarding is always like the most important thing in, in our ecosystem for sure. And uh, yeah, that was a great summary. Thanks for being here. Uh, how about you, Ace? How are you? Hey, what's up? Thanks for having me here. Um, I'm Ace, the founder of Rune Kingdom. And we had to say we really, we, we came to Ordinals really early back to February last year. And our genesis, the inscription numbers start with 60,000. So, and also we designed the logo for Unicell Wallet. So back on March 9th this year, the year of runes, we bet on the rune protocol launch again. And also air dropping the 10,000 rune dragon manners to our community and also the other blue chip communities. Right now, we are doubling down. Yeah, right. Air dropping drones to our pre-mine holders who is ready to ride the wave. And also today, as a builder of runes, I'm here with my own biases. And I'm ready to share and suck in the different experts' insights. Thank you. Beautiful summary. Matt Jaguar, uh, how are you? I've never met you before. I believe you're actually a co-host on the space. Hey, what's up? Thank you for inviting me here. So uh, I'm KK and I'm from uh, you know Net Jaguar. And let me introduce more about Net Jaguar. So Net Jaguar is the you know the first room project with the Net protocol, and we offer a unique gameplay with DMT protocol based system. And probably I know I know uh, probably a few people knows about DMT protocol, but uh, um, it's more like a, you know uh, it will be a halving mechanism like a Bitcoin. So we have released uh, two prophecies recently, and uh, the most close uh, uh, prophecy chapter revised that uh, NFT holders can mine rune tokens, and minting participants can also earn runes as well. So this set it apart from other rune projects, and that's pretty much. Thank you. Yeah, that's exciting to hear. Uh... Nat is a growing part of our ecosystem, and there's a lot of uh, Nat enthusiasts, I'm sure, all over the place. So, yeah, they would be excited to hear about what you've got cooking over there. Um, so, I have a, a short uh, list of questions here that we're just going to go into to cover uh, everything runes. And so, let's just get to it. Uh, 
So the first question that uh, asking some of our co-founders here is just how does the Ruins protocol address the scalability and congestion issues faced by traditional token standards like BRC20? And uh, is there any advantages to UTXO model and Ruins that off, uh, what does it offer for developers and users? Um, so if anybody has any thoughts on that, go ahead, Ruin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm not a developer, but um, obviously I've been kind of studying the space for quite a while now. And I think what it comes down to is the simplicity of rooms over, uh, say, BRC20. Um, you know, BRC20 was built on top of the Ordinals protocol and inherited an amount of the complexity from that, whereas rooms was designed from the ground up for fungible tokens and it's very light in comparison. As you mentioned, it runs on the UTXO-based model rather than the account system of BRC20. And this actually allows for transactions to include way more kind of information. It requires less transactions to actually complete a lot of the tasks. So good examples are um, you can send numerous numbers of different amounts of rooms to different people all in a single transaction. Um, whereas I believe uh, with BRC20 and stuff, it can take two or three transactions to complete a lot of these things. And then this goes up even a lot more when you kind of get into the idea of like airdropping and dropping lots of tokens to people. Um, so this can significantly reduce the amount of UTXO flow for not only the network, but individual users. Um, and yeah, it's, it kind of comes down to this uh, simplicity of being designed with this specifically in mind from the ground up rather than working around other parameters. But it's kind of quite interesting on the scalability front because in, in my head, if you see like the future of where Bitcoin and the economic security of Bitcoin is heading, um, I don't actually see a future where we have low transaction fees on Bitcoin. If anything, uh, if Rooms really does continue to expand and become the de facto token standard on Bitcoin, then I think you're actually likely to see a very high um, fee environment, but that's not really a bad thing because that encourages users and developers to look into uh, layer two solutions, also connections with Solana and near protocols. You're seeing quite a few projects already doing and something that we've got quite a keen focus on, specifically the Solana side. So yeah, there's like this kind of two-sided thing where it is lighter than BRC20 and it should actually reduce congestion. But in the long run, if this picks up user adoption, it will likely cause really high fee environments. And obviously we've already seen a fair amount of that so far. Um, but hopefully in the future, it does actually create a situation where the Bitcoin network is still used as a settlement layer and all of the high velocity trading and all of the experimental stuff still ends up happening on these L2s and Bitcoin still remains this security layer. Um, so yeah, it's like I think in the short term it's it's better than BRC trains and in the long term it's actually beneficial that hopefully it takes off and causes uh, enough fee revenue to keep the security level of Bitcoin high. Yeah, the unique properties of them uh, not being actual ordinal inscriptions and their UTXOs are definitely uh, provide a lot of advantages compared to BRC20s, especially like in their clunky state right now. Um, and yeah, it's kind of like you were saying, like necessity is the mother of, it, of invention. So because Bitcoin is sort of a rock, um, it's, uh, it's kind of clunky and we got to kind of work with it, right? So we'll see what that necessity like creates in the future out of, out of builders like yourself and like maybe get tooling and stuff to make it easier to work with runes but yeah it's exciting to see the path forward and like i know we're only like three days in but there's already there's been a lot of thought on uh utxo models for uh coins uh, in the past and there's a lot of work going on uh, in the background. This is like kind of like a 
as new as it is, it's it's actually an older idea when it comes to Bitcoin. So very exciting to see what builders are going to create to solve some of these native problems. As uh, Eric just joined the space, he's uh, CEO of uh, Verothium Dex and uh, Ornifind and Atomicals Market. So he's a well storied person in in uh, in our space. So yeah, welcome to stage, Eric. I guess uh, you want to give a brief introduction. Go ahead. Um. Yeah, thanks for inviting me up. I uh, appreciate it. So I was just getting out of another space. No, you kind of did that there. Um, as far as, you know, what, what I've been involved with in the space here. So Runes is interesting to me. It's UTXOs, but it still has a lot of the same properties as BRC20s in a way. Um, quite different from Atomicals, which is what it was mimicking from so yeah it's uh interesting to see what will happen with tools coming out for runes um you know everyone was quick to jump on hate on it now and diss it but it was literally launched two day two three days ago people are still building tools uh as i've mentioned we took a step back um from learning with other utxo based protocols like atomicals to let let the protocol get some action, make sure there's no bugs, uh, especially when you're dealing with assets and money uh, from users. So that's the reason we didn't launch immediately. Uh, with that, as we can see, there's some issues going on uh, right now with, with some people with runes, right? So we want to make sure uh, everything is good on that end before we, 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 we dive into that. So that, that's everything's through testing right now. Good stuff. Uh, yeah. Good stuff. Uh, anybody else want to chip in on this? Uh, just like on the, what we're talking about here on the, when it comes to fees and everything. And uh, I know a wizard, you mentioned, uh, you know, you shipped a very, like, you know, a, cheap, a collection at a very competitive price, probably because of the fee environment. Do you want to comment on that at all? Yeah, we actually, for the collection, which was an Arduinos, we used recursion and this really saved us like 90% of the fees and made it possible to ship like pictures that would cost initially like uh, two, three hundred dollars per, per picture with, you know, like even 50 sats per byte and we managed to reduce it to like uh, $10 and $20 without fees. So yeah, recursion was incredible. And in terms of uh, runes, we are still waiting to deploy our rune, especially because of the high fees and uh, you know all the bugs and stuff. And we're just uh, first revealing our art and then just wanting to make sure everything goes smoothly because it's such a large collection and a lot of holders, and we don't want any kind of fuck ups on that side. So yeah, um, we had a tie into that, right? Um, Recursion, that's what it was created for back in 2013 when it was initially released, right? To bring file sizes down to nothing and we'll, we'll continue to have advanced tools and software platforms created to continue to compress images so you will be able to have 4K quality on Bitcoin through recursion, you know, very cheap for artists to distribute. So um, UTXOs are different than some of these other ones because, it, you know, with runes per se, you can you can... A lot of those files are smaller than BRC20s, but images will always be images on chain. Um, so, yeah, there, there's still stuff to work on, but as you mentioned, I mean, our platform's up and ready. Uh, we're in testing now, just getting Particle Network's wallet uh, with their dev team activated for the DEX. MetaMask is already ready to go. Um, we'll obviously look and see, you know... It's that back end, right? So we're working with some other 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 ends on on certain things to to have that ready to go uh, for the decks, and there'll be LPs and such. So runes will be fun when we see more tools and everything, all the little little quirks figured out. Um, it, it happens with every protocol. BRC twenty had the same thing when it was deployed. Runes, atomicals, they, they, they all did, and they were all they were all addressed and fixed. I think those same thing. So file size recursion definitely uh, as as more tools and advancements come into this ecosystem is going to make it a lot better for artists and we'll see a lot more quality art i think start coming on to chain um as fees go man that that's a hit or miss right wizards because the, you, everyone can remember when when in bull runs i mean ethereum fees were ridiculously high 
uh, no matter what. You're paying hundred dollars of fees in F or thousands of dollars in F. I mean, people are complaining now, but I mean, it's literally a hundred dollars in, in Sats fees uh, to move this shit around, which isn't even that pricey uh, if you look at what the mass amount of users coming in. And you know, people could say Casey did this to destroy it or bring all the on-chain activity, right? Because that's what we're having. Well, that's what the white paper states is is on-chain activity is what's going to drive the Bitcoin ecosystem and the price and everything else that we all want to see rise that comes with Bitcoin and all of us here putting in time and work every single day. So is it a good thing or a bad thing? We don't know, right? But it just means there's more users. You have people minting and those people etching, minting, inscribing, whatever you want to call it across the network are bumping those sat fees higher. So that, that also creates higher sat fees because they want to make sure they get in that block. So there's a whole combination of things that have to run with the sat fees. But if you actually look at it, um, I think where it's less than a half a day, you know, you're already back to like the under 50 sat. So if you scroll the mempool and do the homework there, you'll see the fees are, are literally temporary while people keep doing these things. But um, Bitcoin is the most secure um you know, finite, I think, asset in the world. And obviously, it's it's deflationary now with everything we're doing. So it's going to be expensive to play here. Um, it, it is a PVP and it's a decentralized market. So you take what you, what you get and you run with it. Yeah, when you're working with digital gold, I guess things get expensive. You want to go ahead, Ace? Yeah, yeah. talking about the, uh, the recursion is definitely a great like, invitation. Uh, back to 2000, uh, 2023, and we we did our season two collection using recursive, uh, back to the uh, the March uh, the May last year, and we also we are L dropping that that did get, give us a, a big advantage of L dropping like ten thousand the the pre pre mine dragons, and um, back to the topic. To be honest, we we've thinking of that the room room protocol gonna gonna officially reduce the transactions like you didn't have to inscribe another transfer transfer in inscription right and uh, we've thinking like it might be to ma make the, the user side more efficiency of tradings but apparently not the the room protocol hasn't really made things easier for users yet I mean for users and we, we know the the real issue causing the traffic is a block size not the token protocol right unless we do the scaling which is impossible and we don't like it so but looking at the the bright side i think those certain characters that we are fighting with in the uh, rules open up endless the opportunities for issuing assets right we we have new topics every four months plus the six block review which we haven't talked about it because we, we are facing some issue in brc20 that there's a bot they can snapping for names uh, I've got the name. So Casey did this small details. It's very brilliant. You have to wait six blocks review, and that helps prevent like from snapping the, the names. But another main issue about the the certain characters, I have to say, because it's really hard for for investors or or some like people new new into the room room protocols. It's rather hard for them to search for information like. People, someone, someone, some, someone sh share your coin, a rune, and it's this name that like certain characters you're reading, a, like, literally reading a paragraph. We, we don't talk about searching the information. It's, it's really hard for you to remember, right? That's the biggest issue. But I think it's not not gonna be a big issue in the in the futures. And uh, people like Eric, the the, develop, the the builders here, are gonna figure it out. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great point, and. Uh... Yeah, Bitcoin's a bit of a rock. So since we can't change Bitcoin, it's a huge opportunity for entrepreneurs to step in with unique uh, innovations and things like recursion, like we were talking about. Um, you know, shout out Danny from Onchain Monkey. You know, who was uh, one of the first people to utilize that on ordinals. Um, this is like probably new innovations on the way that'll help us smooth out a lot of the rough edges with runes one would hope because there is like a problem there and hopefully a, an, an entrepreneur or someone that's creative can uh integrate and and figure out that problem you want to go ahead uh, uh room line? 
Yeah, so just a quick point on the uh, room names. It's, it's definitely a valid point. Uh, interestingly, when we're talking about uh, the tooling and things being built, I think uh, Casey specifically was talking about how this can be quite abstracted away um, by essentially the uh, decentralized exchanges, the centralized exchanges, the wallet providers, and they, there's actually this quite high likelihood that big projects that come to rooms won't actually care about their ticker, won't care about the new mobility or the name, and instead what they'll do is they'll just pick a long a random ass, I, I believe it can be automatically generated for you, and then they'll just go and tell every single front end that this is actually what our ticker says. So say if USDC were to come over, they could just pick any name and then get all of the front ends to implement an actual name that is searchable. Um, a little bit like your ticker and the uh, address for a contract address for an Ethereum token. So they, I think there's solutions to a lot of these things. It's obviously just going to take some time for everything to be implemented. And, you know, it's, it's very early days still. But yeah, just a little point on that. Right. And uh, yeah, Casey's implemented like a time unlocking mechanism for smaller tickers as we go here over the course of a few years. So. There's always that too, right? Like it's just a matter of time. But yeah. so, you know, we're just a few days old, so it's super early times. I do want to get on to our second question though, which is just talking about some of the opportunities that ordinals and runes have provided for early adopters and uh, some of the incentives around uh, maybe like early incentives around token distribution or mining incentives. Um, if anybody wants to speak on that or if they have, maybe it uh, applies to their project at all or if they've seen any other projects um, that are like rewarding early users who just want to comment on that or like just incentive structures as a whole. Sorry, Block, I had it. So, uh, no worry. So, well, it's really anybody can jump in, but if there's any comments on uh, early adoption opportunities and ordinals or rooms uh, in particular. Uh, anybody has any comment on that, uh, feel free to chip in. And also just like comment on maybe some of the incentives or maybe there's creative incentives that we're seeing other projects that people would like to talk about or anything like that. Uh, feel free to step in. Yeah, I, 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 find, I find it quite interesting because there was this whole movement of tokenization for uh, crowdfunding and everything else that's kind of been seen in Web3 where everyone said, oh, why does it need, why does it need its own token? And I can actually see quite a lot of the benefits of most projects having their own tokens and you can kind of see this whole thing leading into from from the pre rooms uh, movement into distribution for NFT project uh, ordinal projects in the future, but also as um, like point systems and everything else that kind of continues to advance. I can see a lot more people uh, kind of integrating rooms into that way of distributing a reward token, distributing some kind of token on the Bitcoin network to either ordinal holders or anything else. And I think that'll continue. I don't think the pre rooms um, kind of setup will end here. Uh, it's just going to kind of morph into different versions similar to the point systems that everyone's been running and stuff like that. So I, I, I think it will kind of carry on in quite interesting and creative ways. And we're already like looking at different ways that we can mean a uh, room and then try and somehow give it some value and then airdrop that to our community through either uh, collab marketing but also through like interesting mint dynamics and stuff so i think i think there's a lot more to be seen on this front um but yeah we weren't specifically involved with the actual pre pre minting ourselves yeah, I guess we did see already like a lot of incentive structures play out uh, with the pre rooms. Uh, there's a lot of creative things people uh, people did, and a variety of airdrop mechanisms and uh, and strategies for airdropping that they were employed. So, but yeah, also uh, yeah, Wizard, if you want to step in on this, I'm sure you have something to say. Yeah, I just wanted to say that like psychology is everything in Ordinals and right now because of the high fees you can see most of collections and the rules are kind of bleeding currently because of the really high fees 
and I believe that once fees calm down, the liquidity will flow back to the established tickers and we are kind of facing a similar issue right now because our collection is so cheap, it's like 20 bucks per per one and like the secondary fees are really high on Magic Eden and this just, you know, makes people not really want to participate right now with those high fees. So I believe, yeah, once the everything settles and the money will flow back to the established stickers. Yeah, and that's actually maybe um, where we'll see some innovation in the future is from layer twos like B squared and the like. Uh, there's a variety of layer twos out there that are kind of like offering maybe bridging opportunities in high fee environments because if your collection is, uh, you know, it has X floor price, but it costs four hundred dollars to transact on the main network you know that's an issue it's like definitely a barrier for for the smaller collections like that or just like collections where maybe they have a larger distribution so there's just a smaller floor price it's like it doesn't really matter why it's just like that's a, just a challenge um eric i see you wanted to step in before we get to ace I was just going to say with fees, right, that's where our decks with the LPs and such will come into play, where you're able to just, um, at least with the, with the top traded uh, runes presently, you know, we're not going to offer all 8,000 of those. Um, you can't uh, with LPs, but for some of those top ones, you'll be able to save hundreds of fees when, when you do swap or use LPs, anyone that knows that versus, versus marketplace side. So there'll be ways to do that. Um, you know, people hate to say it, but they're, they're, some L2s are needed for that reason, to, to help mitigate these fees uh, on Bitcoin. You know, a lot of these payment rails don't need to be through Layer 1. Um, so that's just going to come in time with tooling and as the ecosystem itself advances. Yeah, 100%. And actually, B-squared has a collection uh, called Blockheads that, you know, is very cheap. You could bridge to mainnet if you please, but again, like with 2,000 sat V bytes, like we just saw recently, if there's, you never know when that's going to happen. The, the spikes in the mempool are like really uh, something else lately, just high volatility in mempool environment. Um, so yeah, it's just like, what are what are the solutions right going forward? And we're definitely seeing like a lot of people coming to bring like whatever talents they have to like create create these uh, solutions. Go ahead, Ace. Okay, okay. So referring to our questions, um, we we would believe grabbing on the, the earliest part is the, the key, and everybody know there's no such a new thing under the sunlight, right? We always use the the, the old bottle to fill in with the, the new wine. And I think people always remember those who dealt to bet very early. And and also that our motivation at the first place isn't just about like how intricate the room protocol is. It's more about our like, room kingdom's willingness to bring our community into the uncertain things. Because we, everybody know the big hype always costs us more profit. And like with primary, uh, pre-mining back in March, um, a path that not many founders took, and we, we does that. We were the fourth in line after ASIC, Rune Guardians, and uh, Rune Mining Miners. So we, when the, the benefits start showing and everyone's dazzling by those certain characters, like floating their screens, we believe the, the, the money will flow towards the projects like ours that we took the early risk and kept building. And um, from the market side, we we know the draw off of the, the, those prime the, the pre mine FTs the kind of mixed up the the market expectations for runes, and uh, is thus turning a potential positive into a negative, which is healthy. Um, but for the long term, I think we are still all in on runes, right? And with so many builders on the stage, we're working on runes now, and no one is going to stop until we're making a profit. Yes, thanks. Yeah, yeah, great input. Uh, Nat Jaguar, go ahead. Yeah, so we definitely are early stage right now. So runes are a lot of things to do, and there are a lot of, you know, opportunities to give in to the users. And I believe the Rune pro protocol offers more like a users a chance to participate, much like the fair launch mentioned by BRC20 before. 
but um, while it may not be entirely fair, but users can still, you know, reduce information and some trade through various channels, like to, uh, you know, discover more gameplay and opportunities and to get more money and pay. And also I find out there are like some, you know, good use tools already in the marketplace and uh, they support users or to create a room by just one click. And for NetJagra, holding, I think uh, holding an NFT is, you know, uh, it's more like to owning a, a mining machine. So allowing users to continue its mining of the rooms and room rewards will also, you know, vary based on the quantity and the re duration of holding NetJagra. And we are currently, you know, waiting for the right moment to airdrop rewards to our holders. Yeah, and thank you. Yeah, this actually leads into our third question, which is just talking about um, some of the strategies that collections or startups are going to employ um, to keep their like communities engaged. Uh, before we move on to that, though, Wizard, if you just want to say something about the last subject, go. you're free to go. Yeah, I just wanted to add, like uh, I said, that we also were kind of like one of the first Bruin projects we were mining our room since our mint started which was like the 13th of february so our holders were kind of mining in those two months and yeah i just believe that building and being here every day showing up it's gonna be really beneficial for the project and the holders in the long term because there were a lot of projects that popped up in the last moment and tried you know to benefit from the hype that was around the lounge but as we all see most of them are already starting to fade so yeah just wanted to point out that being here every day makes a difference and all those projects that have been here from the beginning definitely have a huge uh, leverage against others and are positioning themselves even though if they haven't deployed their rooms even until now, this doesn't really matter to me if you're going to be number one or number 10 or number 100. It's more about what you're bringing to your community and holders rather than what number your ticker is. Yeah, that's actually completely true. It's like the people that stick with it and show up every day. Uh, there's a lot of familiar faces here and here in the crowd as well. And it's just like, you know, you recognize these people when they show up every day. Um, and yeah, the communities that stick with it are the ones that uh, persevere for sure uh maybe you would like to uh, comment on like our third question here which is just like since you had like a pre-rune uh like uh incentive structure i like a few of us up here uh, you know have are running communities that that had that um like what are you guys doing going forward to uh in, you know incentivize your community to stick around some of the strategies you employ to engage them and just just keep that community atmosphere going uh maybe you could talk a little bit on that wizard for yourself yeah we're just currently waiting for the right moment and seeing how everything we want to see how everything settles first and then after that we're gonna work on a more co concrete strategy because we are engaging with people every day we are having one-on-one -on -one talks and just trying to because it's a such a large project we are trying to see what the most of our community wants and build from there you know because it's really hard to satisfy that large of a community but you can see that how 90 percent of the rooms fail by over promising and under delivering so we just tend to you know under promise and try to over deliver and we have some stuff in the pipeline but as we did with our collection because we, we had like seven genesis wizards which were inscribed the very first days like sub 1200 inscription and we just waited to see how things develop and then launched our collection it's probably gonna be something similar with rooms we're just gonna see where the wind goes and play from there yeah, it's just so early. You kind of got to let things settle. That definitely uh, makes sense. Uh, yeah, does anybody else want to jump in there? Uh, Net Jaguar or Ace or anybody else? Rune, Eric? Go ahead, Net. Yeah, I think uh, someone just mentioned Roomstore and RSSC before, right? So I think there are two, you know, uh, actually great examples for, for these strategies. For the to the growth the you know community so both projects so I dropped the tokens to community members holding like a BDC NFTs like early on and uh, they just 
would be, you know, the room, room airdrop during Bitcoin halving events. And this helped them to establish an early community and gain significant attention in both the, you know, you know the hot topics, right? And they entered the market very early and providing them with great mo uh, momentum and discussions Right, and everyone just looking to you know how to get the runestone and RSIC airdrop. So, in my opinion, this is a very you know effective marketing you know strategy, and they are most they they actually kill it right. And uh, what what I can learn from is that we can use these ways to you know to stimulate the uh, the community and to you know to put more uh, things to the community and give them more things right. Yeah. So. The next topic is actually just talking about use cases, which is that you just kind of like led right into that. So we might as well just move into anything anybody wants to speak on, just actual use cases for runes uh, with their communities. I know, uh, Eric, you're shipping um, a DEX, and Rune Mine, you know, you're uh, shipping like a large ecosystem of applications. So, and we have a few collections up here. So, is there, um, like, any, like, I assume there's a reason people are using UTXOs and runes as opposed to some of the existing assets that we already have been playing with for the first year. So is there specific use cases that you guys are looking to use? Uh, like any, anybody can answer this question just for runes themselves. Uh, are they just memes or is there more to it? That, that's a great question, right? It, it, it's <clears throat> Casey created the protocol to be, let's just say, the shitcoin casino. So, whereas you have a UTXO based protocol like Atomicals, that's an entire ecosystem. So, th there, there's differences there. So, everyone likes to play and gamble. Could it, could they, you know, the, the protocol can obviously be, be upgraded um, and things like that. So, we don't know. Uh, what could potentially come from it right now? Obviously, we're going to build as though there's going to be ecosystems built for that, right? So with the DEXs, there's obviously uh, LPs and, and such, which people understand, um, you know, what those work with. So that's obviously what we're offering. We, you know, <clears throat> I came on board after the team had already started cooking. They deployed the Verothian Mines on the BRC 420. I can't really go into more detail on that because we as a company haven't launched or I haven't spoken on that. So I can't really drop any of that alpha at this time uh, until you see it come from the page and then I can kind of do an AMA with that so I can't really speak anymore on, on, on that right so you guys are cooking it's just all under the hood for now but yeah definitely anybody in the audience follow Eric and Ferozian Dex because yeah it's uh, Eric has a long history with uh, in the space and uh, a variety of successful projects under his belt so definitely check them out uh, Ruin you want to go ahead yeah, sure. Um, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing because it's like when you look at Solana and what made Solana uh, now the most used chain, it was largely meme coins. Before that, it was, you know, lots uh, of just uh, NFTs and this kind of culture. And, you know, when you say like uh, what use cases does rooms have, I, I honestly think that part of that is just the fact that you've got Casey at the helm who obviously created Ordinals and, you know, there's a lot of um, hope of like where he can take this in the future. But also like this hype that has been built around rooms is bringing people back to Bitcoin. It's bringing the conversation back around to Bitcoin. It's, and, and obviously, don't get me wrong, all started this, and then BRC20, and now Rooms is kind of like the next step in this hype, and, and obviously everything else that's come in between. But the, the kind of like the utility of the mean token and bleeds into bringing people back to Bitcoin, bringing users and bringing developers, and then the same way that Rooms will probably evolve into uh, hopefully more versatile and useful assets on the Bitcoin network. It's the same way that memes bring people into our ecosystem and then from there you kind of see the development. So that's, it, you know, that's a large part of kind of what drew us to this was the attention that it was bringing. Uh, obviously that's beneficial for ourselves, uh, building a protocol, uh, building a suite of applications for it, but also the fact that this just adds to the ETF narratives, to 
uh, the Bitcoin L2 narratives to everything that's going on on Bitcoin at the moment, and it can kind of act as just a catalyst. And I think, honestly, that's kind of like one of the most useful use cases of rooms right now. And hopefully this will develop as more users come in into more specific use cases. And, you know, one, one of the things, again, that we're looking at is minting a room and like some of the interesting conversation around oncoming goods is the fact that you could essentially mint these rooms whilst doing Bitcoin transactions in other places. And we're looking at like being able to add uh, transactions into each of our users, uh, adding in our own room to each of our users' transactions. So I think there's there's ways that they can be used to reward. But I think honestly, the main thing at the moment is bringing people back to Bitcoin and then seeing where that develops from. Yeah, we're definitely seeing like an expansion of the Bitcoin black hole and a real bleed from other chains into Bitcoin. Um, and like a total, the Bitcoin takeover is uh, happening. Like we're we're all seeing it. It's only it's only been a year, and now we have like a brand new shiny protocol. It's just a few days old from you know the creator of the Ordinals protocol. So that carries a lot of weight behind it. Um, so yeah, we're just like in a in a very exciting time. Um, and you know we can just like open up to a broader conversation actually because the fifth question. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> delves into this quite a bit about just like um, interoperability with other chains and uh, talking about like collaboration across other chains and different blockchain networks. So that's part of like this, the whole bringing it back to Bitcoin thing is that you've seen a lot of outreach from layer twos and different projects that are bringing. Uh, kind of tapping into the liquidity on the other side, but also just fostering collaboration, onboarding uh, projects, whether it's NFTs or anything else. You know, people are burning over back to ordinals. People are, you know, shifting away from tokens on other networks into BRC twenties and runes. So we're just seeing this dramatic expansion of the black hole. Um, so yeah, if anybody just wants to talk or like has any comments on just. Uh, Bitcoin interacting with the other chains. Uh, that, that is like one of our final topics. But then we can just also have a broader conversation about runes in general. I mean, if anybody wants to speak on their projects, um, maybe we'll get into that uh, after. I don't know if anybody has a hard cap on time because we had a bit of a slow start today. So feel free to jump in and let us know if you got to go. But until then, yeah, we'll just talk about some of this interoperability with the other chains. And uh, some of this bleed into Bitcoin and bring it back to Bitcoin. Uh, does anybody want to comment on that? Go ahead, Rune. Yeah, so, you know, just on this front, like, uh, we've, we, you know, we've seen an, uh, an explosion in interest from projects like Zeus Network and molecular and stuff on the Solana uh, Bitcoin interoperability front. We've seen um, I think East Blue are building a near protocol based abstraction layer. We've personally had like it started out with outreach to L2s and now it's becoming just uh, Bitcoin L2s and other uh, interoperability layers just kind of reaching out to us pretty much like fairly regularly and I, I feel like it's kind of a galvanizing focal point which is going to bring about uh, this interoperability between a lot of different chains because if, if, if Solana and Ethereum or whoever want to build a bridge like that's great but if you can just build a bridge to Bitcoin and then Bitcoin becomes the place where you bridge to whatever chain or however you use uh, account abstraction and stuff like that like it kind of becomes this focal point which creates this interoperability and again we we're looking to launch our um, we're actually going to launch our token probably on solana at this point uh just because of the tooling and the mechanics and again we're trying to kind of galvanize this solana community that we believe we can bring lots of them over to uh, Bitcoin, and then that can kind of grow the Bitcoin DeFi space, or like whatever you want to call it right now. And um, so, therefore, we're building a bridge. 
for uh, Rune Solana, and we've had loads of interest from L2s about kind of integrating those bridges. We're in conversations with other bridge builders like X Labs and people about integrating their bridges, and I just feel like this is kind of really the start of interoperability between chains on a way that it makes sense that Bitcoin can be that center focal point and then it can expand out to all these other chains and maybe eventually then be sucked into Bitcoin or maybe they'll just act as these satellites around the Bitcoin network still. Yeah, Bitcoiners definitely uh, have had a fairly prickly reputation to say the least. So outreach is uh, super important. And, you know, we're getting... Because we're getting builders from the other chains coming over, you know, they're maybe they're native from other places and they're embracing Bitcoin for the first time, or maybe they're Bitcoiners from the start and they made their way to other chains initially. But now that this these opportunities have opened up, they're coming back and they're bringing people with them, uh, which is just fantastic to see. You know, we're seeing an expansion in nodes on the network. You were seeing, you know dramatic increase in, in network activity. Um, so these are all positive signs for the chain. So I couldn't be, I'm personally, I couldn't be more bullish. Um, and it's really nice to meet all you guys. And I encourage the audience to definitely follow everybody up here, follow the projects, follow B squared, uh, stay tuned, turn on your notifications for everybody. Cause there's a lot of cool stuff. People are cooking up. Um, yeah, maybe uh, now Jaguar Ace. I, I, if you, do you guys want to talk about your own projects? Feel free if anybody is ready to speak. You just go ahead and just talk a little bit about maybe where you've come from and where you where you guys think you're going. Ace, go ahead. Uh, okay, so I think the uh, the the biggest opportunity that that, that Rune is gonna bring to us is they're gonna knocking on the door to the. Uh, the the device device somewhere right because we've been waiting and seeing the uh, the ordinals and the brc20 rise and down in the past one year and the, the most exciting which we are waiting for is the the device arm didn't came because of the uh the protocol and the uh the block size right so as the pre mine the, the pre minor projects we all want to do something with the uh, liquidity lock because, to be honest, when the pre-mine is down, the obligations of all the pre-miners are down, which means the floor price gonna 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 go down, and we don't want to see that. So that leads us to thinking about the new demand and the supply, which is the layer two slash uh, solutions. It's this is really cool because we always we, we are clapping with B two network and we are talking about these things for for like two weeks. It's a it's a long time for Bitcoin, but we talk about everything that we what we can do in the futures and uh, the the applications with Rune is gonna happen to make some magic uh, inflections on the uh, layer two network with native Bitcoin assets. So back to my my project with Rune Kingdoms, we have a lot of like uh, e uh, economic assets like dragons, like nights like uh, the, the the land resource we're gonna release in may and it's it's really interesting that you're gonna imagine another uh a guy fight with students and with native bitcoin assets on bitcoin layer 2 and using the smaller uh we say uh, less frictions and more in uh, and we can see more economic activities right so like i said this is a great opportunity for us to see something like a device somewhere to arise and to make the general rise. And I'm here in Room Kingdom waiting for you all of guys. And we see you at the top. Thanks. Yeah, the integration of GameFi and DeFi um, and Runes is an interesting topic to talk about, actually. And just anything else, DeFi and Runes. Because, um, yeah, I've def definitely. Uh, I can, I definitely feel that we're going to have a DeFi season on Bitcoin. You get basically all the signs are there. We're just getting started. We're putting infrastructure in place for it. We have a new protocol um, that has unique advantages over BRC twenties that people are looking to utilize for distribution and community engagement. So 
it's just uh, it's just like a matter of time before it feels like this runes DeFi summer hits and yeah, projects that uh, integrate are working with like layer twos like B squared definitely um, B squared you know s help solve a lot of the unique challenges of just operating on on Bitcoin, but uh, and it's just exciting to see like projects like uh, like Rune Kingdoms, you know, because it's there's a lot of uh, interest in like GameFi and Metaverse and and, and Bitcoin DeFi. It really feels like everything is 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 trending in that direction, um, and whether we we see it this summer or next summer, um, it because Bitcoin is. But it means, at least for me, it's kind of feels like final destination. Like we finally could build on Bitcoin in in these ways, and uh, so everything, everything. Like I, I don't think there's there's another place that we're going after Bitcoin. We're just gonna we're building on Bitcoin now. So it's just a very exciting time because I've been in a space for more than ten years, and uh, I've never used Bitcoin more in my life than this you know the past year and i think a lot of people probably are the same way right um so yeah it's just just an exciting time and it, uh there's so much going on so many projects so many uh exciting things happening uh every day um it's, it's actually hard to keep track of it all and it used to be like bitcoin used to be you know a very sleepy place um but you know I, actually i'd like to talk about nat's uh, to Nat Jaguar uh, on this a bit because Nat is like a, a protocol idea that utilizes some of like uh, Bitcoin's uh, you know native uh, you know transaction history for like the protocol to like kind of uh, so like if you want to speak on that a bit and like maybe how Rune's play into that yeah yeah for sure for sure can you hear me guys right yeah, I guess I'll just uh, introduce more about the NetJago and also about the our DMT protocol. So um, I think there's a, there are a few like points that uh, uh, differ from us from uh, I mean differs us apart from traditional NFTs projects. So firstly, it's based on a DMT protocol that uh, as we know, and uh, we basically uh, feature a continuous open minting mechanism that allows everyone to an uh, equal chance to participate in the game. And it uh, you know, uh, incorporates a halving mechanism similar to Bitcoin. Just so we started with 100 blocks uh, to uh, you know, to produce one NetJaguar, but with the, uh, the halving event, um, we start with uh, 200 blocks to produce one net jaguar and uh, uh, more and more in the future and moreover the recently so we released the second chapter of prophecy that I mentioned before so we rivals that the users holding NFTs can continuously mean uh, you know mean rooms and the users participating in uh, you know minting can also give us the airdrop to the holders and this differs from the room distribution mechanism in other projects so in short so both holding and participating in minting new NFTs allows for mining and uh, we also uh, remember our the uh, you know the minting process if you guys uh, to mint new net Jaguar, uh, with the failure but we still account that gas fee for our future airdrop and this uh, this is actually the new uh, you know the new way to to do the distribution and uh, what's even more remarkable is that net jaguar uh, you know integrates an uh, automatic adjustments mechanism similar to bitcoin's difficulty bump and and this ensures that distribution ratios can automatically adjust based on the popularity of minting and this uh, this is the new, you know, the uh, the play form of NetJaguar. Thank you. Yeah, good stuff. Good to hear. Uh, I know a lot of people in the Net community. Um, I interact with them regularly, actually. So I'm sure uh, Runes in that coexisting uh, is going to have a lot of people excited. You go ahead. Uh, Remind. Uh, we're free to talk about anything at this point. I think we'll be winding up the space here shortly. So just open talk, open questions. Cool. Yeah. No, I just want to say, uh, really interesting what you guys are doing at that Jaguar, and 
and like, honestly, my my journey came back to Bitcoin not that long ago. I've been watching ordinals kind of from the sidelines. Um, I was very focused on kind of like the full chain space being like kind of like what I saw as the first Bitcoin true DeFi. And then it's only more recently that I've kind of come back to specifically on the Bitcoin and just on that point of like an explosion of new technologies and ideas. And it's just been the wildest ride for about the last four months, just getting up to speed on every single new variation, all of the different new standards and everything. DMT is something that I, I've done a bit of research into and I, I find it super, super interesting. I, I, I wish I had more time in the day that I wasn't working to uh, dive into these projects a bit more. Uh, but, but yeah, you know, like I, I believe that there's a lot coming to this space and um, Room Run specifically, like we're super interested talking to any project. So if anyone has anything that they think they might be interested to integrate any of our technology, anything on their side that would make sense, talk to us. We're, we're literally open. You can come into our Discord, you can jump in a, a collab chat. Um, or you can contact us on uh, Twitter. But um, we're having so many conversations with so many different projects about how this technology can evolve and how we can kind of implement rules with all these L2s, with all these, like, and there's going to be so many different ways that the DEXs are going to work. And somewhat because it's somewhat complicated to work around the UTXO model, but it's also very interesting and exciting. And I think ordinals have, like, and what has come from ordinals with all these new protocols has really kind of pushed the envelope of thinking on um, working around Bitcoin rather than trying to build these new blockchains and come up with new consensus mechanisms, but just keeping Bitcoin as the foundation and then working out what you can really do on top of Bitcoin and using the data from Bitcoin. And I find that side very interesting with DMT and I'll definitely be checking you guys out more. But yeah, if any, anyone has any good ideas and suggestions, you know, we have our indexer and it will be going out soon. Uh, more publicly, we already have um, a few projects looking to integrate it into things like trading bots and different different things like that. So I'm super open to any shout outs and uh, yeah, just love to chat to people about how we can move this space forward. Yeah, great comments. Yeah, for sure. It's a very exciting time. Uh, we got a new person on stage, uh, Kakao. Uh, nice to have you here. Nice to meet you. We were going to wrap up the space, but uh, I've seen that they came up, so I thought uh, maybe we'd see if they had anything to say. <laughs> Twitter's always fun. But yeah, uh, just staying on subject, though, before we go, um, if anybody had anything they wanted to say about their own projects or whatever, feel free, just hop in. Um, yeah, again, open conversation, open dialogue, and if anybody has any questions for anybody else, um, you know, feel free to chime in. I guess other other than that, I guess we'll close up. But yeah, I'll give you guys another minute if uh, you have anything else to say. All right, all right. I guess we can wrap it up. There's lots to talk about on runes, but everybody only has so much time, and we always continue the conversation later. So just want to thank everybody for coming. Thanks to all our, everybody uh, you know, listening. Uh, we thank you for your time. And, yeah, definitely follow everybody on the stage. Check out everybody's projects. Uh, there's a lot of new stuff cooking every day. Um, a lot of stuff coming out from B-Squared. They have a lot of stuff... Uh, you know, their mainnet just went live, and, you know, there's a lot of collaborations on that side, so a lot, lots of opportunities, and, uh, yeah, just stay safe, everybody, uh, transacting as well, you know, don't click any links you shouldn't, and, uh, you know, see you around the next one, okay? Peace. So, bye.